Hey, how you doing? And today we're gonna to talk about 120p on the Sony FX30. So when I first got my FX30, I'd done a few test shots and was trying to work out the camera because it was my first Sony. It was going really well. We were shooting some stuff in the, in the daytime sun and it was all in that video. I sold my P4K for a Sony FX30. But there was one problem that I found that when I switched over to the high frame rates and I was shooting in 100 frames per second, I noticed that it was really noisy. Now the exposure levels were all right. They were reading right on the camera. Everything was fine. And I was thinking, why is it so noisy in the daytime? So proceeding that, I went online and you know was reading all the documentation, the Sony documentation, and from certain people. With all that information, I started to do test after test after test. When to shoot in low light? When would it be a good time to shoot in high frames per second and, and stuff like that? Now I see a lot of videos to this day about the high frame rates on the Sony FX13, how it's trash and, it's, and you can't use it. And how is that even possible? Because Sony have put this camera in their cinema line. Why would they put a feature there that you can't really use and it would degrade the, the, the actual, you know, reputation of the camera? But I just think a lot of people are getting things wrong. Now, I don't want to say that I'm an expert, but I believe that my way of how I shoot for me is absolutely perfect. I did a video recently about the Sigma 1.4, amazing lenses. And it wasn't just because of the autofocus and stuff why I chose the Sigma range. I've got two of them now, the 30 millimeter and the 16 millimeter. It was because they were 1.4. If you're shooting full frame, you can shoot 2.8, daytime, nighttime, whatever. But when you're shooting on an FX30 or a crop sensor camera, you need to let as much light in as humanly possible without increasing the ISO to ridiculous levels. Now to keep the FX30 within its base ISO of 800 to 2500, or you can go a bit higher in certain other modes, but we'll, that's for another video, you really need to get the fastest lenses you can find, and that's why I chose the Sigma lenses. Now a lot of people are complaining about the 120p. What we need to understand is the FX30 has a 6K downsampled sensor. Okay, so it's a 6K sensor downsampling into 4K. It's true 4K. And because of that downsampling, it makes the noise very fine. It's very like film-like grain. It's very pleasing and lovely. But if you go over 60 frames per second, that downsampling stops and then you're back into normal 4K. Plus you've got that little crop in. That means all the noise is gonna become apparent. It becomes bigger. So. It begs this question, if your footage is noisy, how do you overcome that? All you guys are cinematographers, you know that the only way to overcome that is to increase your light so you can get better exposure. So it's the same thing for 120, 100 frames per second. When you're going into that high frame rate, just get more light in, that's all you need to do. When I'm shooting on the FX30, I like to kind of expose around two stops over, maybe 1.7, somewhere around that, because I find it gives me the cleanest image. If I drop to a high frame rate, like 100 frames per second, that exposure dips. So I need to compensate for that. So I need to let more light in. So whether that's opening up the lens, jumping up to the next base ISO, I need to do that. Even if it looks slightly bright on screen, I want to get my multimeter into about plus two because I feel comfortable at plus two that my noise levels are gonna be very clean. And that is what I found out for the Sony FX30. So let me show you what metering I use and I'll show you how I expose and then we can go out and do some tests. Okay, so let's look at my metering and how I expose. So if you look over in this corner here, you can see my metering is on multi. Now I like multi because it kind of gives me a general idea of what's going on in the whole image, okay? So even though it's a bit tricky because if you go overexpose, it's more than likely gonna be picking up the whites, but I found that getting this to about plus two is going to give you the best image. So let me show you what I mean by metering first. So if I go into the menu and we go over to metering, and then you can see we've got different options here, center, spot, entire screen average, and highlight. So you can choose, and obviously they all do different things, but I keep mine in multi, okay? So if we come out of here now, this is on plus 0 0.3. Now I wouldn't really shoot here. Although it looks good on screen, I wouldn't really shoot here because I consider that a bit too low. So I could open up the f-stop a bit on the lens. So let's go down to f1.2. And now the exposure reads at 1.7, plus 1.7. And I would feel very comfortable at shooting here. But if I was shooting in 120p, I'd probably still want to take this a bit higher. So I'm going to jump up to the next ISO. 
and then you can see now it's showing me overexposed and you can see that it's overexposed as well so i could either nd that down or i can close the f-stop the aperture so i'm going to bring the aperture down until the two stops flashing And there we go, at f2.2, it stopped flashing. Now obviously, if you wanted to keep a nice bokeh, you could do this with an ND rather than using the f-stop. But just for the sake of the video, I just use the f-stop. Now this is gonna be perfect for me when I'm shooting in 120 or 100 frames per second because it's gonna give me the least amount of noise because I'm overexposed at plus two, okay? So even though it's daytime, and I'm in 2,500 ISO, and a lot of people ask me as well, why do you shoot at such a high ISO in daytime? The reason why is because I like to keep the image really clean, really, really clean. I will use 800 sometimes, it just depends on the situation, but 2,500, you'll normally catch me right here. Is that the right way or the wrong way? The only thing that matters is you come away with the cleanest image possible. Okay, so let's go into the back garden now and we'll do the test. So, if we look at this scene here, with my metering set at plus two, and we're shooting in 100 frames per second, you can see that the noise is actually very low. I think, personally, that is not just usable, it's more than usable. I don't think I would need to add any noise reduction to this, but if I did, the noise reduction would only be a smidgen. Now I think this is the perfect scene to show you this example because we've got lots of deep shadows here with bright parts as well and this is the kind of thing that you would, you know, see a lot of noise popping up. So plus two on exposure gives you so little noise. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drop this exposure so the meter reads zero, zero, so perfect exposure and then we're going to see what happens to the noise levels. So as you can see, the noise levels are horrendous now. Really, now this is what I call unusable. If you try to put noise reduction on this, it's gonna soften up the image, it's gonna make it look really bad, okay? So you can't really do that. So plus two is gonna be best when you're using high frame rates. Get that exposure up, get more lighting. Don't just bump your ISO to like 5,000 or something. You need to have fast lenses, and this is why I suggest you start with the Sigmas in their use price range are absolutely amazing for what you can get. So that concludes the video. Very short, very sweet. If you're gonna shoot in high frame rates, you need more lighting, okay? Better lens or get more light, it's more than usable. Shooting at nighttime at ISO 5000, yes, that can be done in S-Log3, but that's for another video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something, but most of all, don't just take my word for it. You need to go out there and just try. You don't need to go out and film anything elaborate. Just go and film a, a contrasty scene and then just step your exposure down with an ND and then just take it into grading, see what you like and what you don't like, and then you'll know in the future what's usable and what isn't. So take care and I'll see you on the next one. Later.